Hey, welcome to Home Renovation, the YouTube channel that's been designed to help homeowners like you do renovations at home and get professional results. Today, we are gonna share with you over a dozen amazing drywall techniques that are gonna revolutionize your life, save you a ton of time, and help you solve every problem you're gonna run into. And if you've never seen this before, trust me, you wanna watch this video. This will save you about five to six hours of work in your next project. So if you're renovating your basement, you're going to run into a variety of different problems. You're going to run into um, drywall that's not long enough for the wall. How do you seam it? How do you splice it? You're going to run into boxes that aren't hanging low enough to put your fixtures on. You're going to run into taping problems and how to finish everything just the way you want to. How to finish up to the window, because not everybody wants to put in window jam and casing. It's rather expensive. You can go drywall right to the window, but you got to know this trick. So we're going to show you in this video different tools that will speed up the process. It'll help make an amateur taper like yourself do the job a lot faster and still get a great result. And we're going to show you tips and tricks for what to do when you screw up. Because if you're new in drywall, you're going to make mistakes. And the key to this is knowing how to fix your mistakes and still have it finish perfect. Because you don't want to get all through the project and then just to paint it and start seeing cracking everywhere. So stay with us today. We're going to show you at least a dozen things that you need to know to get a great job. Trick number one, when you're going to screw drywall in, use one of these bad boys. This is a drywall dimpler bit. Get three in a bag for under 10 bucks. They're amazing. And I love them. Now they don't exactly lock into these impact drivers, but they don't fall out either, okay? They just pull out. It's kind of odd. But I love using an impact driver. It's smaller, lightweight, it's kind of easier because you're going to put a lot of screws on the wall. What this does, it has a preset depth to drive the screw. And I'll just demonstrate. No matter how hard you push, that nasty sound at the end is the bit wasting its time. And it always sets it inside, never breaks the paper. It's easy to fill and you don't have to worry about, like I did in other videos, using just a regular drill bit. It always sets a perfect depth, all right? And while I'm showing this, I'm going to show you a little trick. What if you just miss the stud? Well, that didn't miss the stud. That's a really thick stud. Oh, there we go. So now I've missed the stud. I'm going to show you how to solve that. Go in reverse and push to the side. The threads will grab the drywall and pull out. Now instead of leaving that hole as something you have to patch, just go in a bit of an angle. Problem solved, all right? So if you just miss the stud, back up, figure it out, and just change your angle, find the wood, and drive the drill home, and you'll be good. That is going to make your life easy. You can do that all day long. And then when you go to tape, you're not gonna constantly bumping into the edge of the screws, which causes you to slow down. So when you're filling all your holes, every hole will be sunk nice and deep and without breaking paper, of course, which is key. But the biggest issue is when you're taping your basement, you're not gonna be switching back to the drill to fix your mistakes over and over and over and over again. And that'll save you a lot of time. Okay, the next trick I'm gonna show you is how to use a cutout tool. Now listen, if you don't have a cutout tool, you need to buy one, all right? If you're gonna do a basement renovation without a cutout tool, you're crazy. It's gonna cost you a fortune in repairing and fixing all the holes that you build. Now one of these things, you can buy a cutout tool on Amazon for about 60 bucks. And so it's not a big investment. And when you do, make sure you buy the drywall guide point bits. I'm gonna to try to open this thing up here and I'll show you one that's new as you can see. There is a cutting scrolling blade, but at the end of the blade, there's a smooth shank. It's like a router, it's like a router bit tip. Okay, and this is a guide point. So what happens is when it goes into the wall, this will be sitting against whatever material you're cutting against and just it'll be spinning and guiding you around and then this will be cutting the material. Let me just demonstrate how this works. When I'm hanging my board, I used to put the top on first and I make a quick mark, obviously beside the stud where the box is gonna be and how many inches down it goes. So I can just go like this, it says 22, I make 22 and I can just make a quick mark at the end of the tape. Warning, this is going to be a little loud. <laughs> you just cut to the edge of the box and then you hop over the metal box. Voila. And that is perfect every time. All right. 
So that cutting tool gets you the perfect cutout and without destroying the box, without destroying the wires. Remember, if you set this depth here properly, I've seen guys complain, oh yeah, guys use that tool and they cut my wires all the time. I'm like, don't be ridiculous. If you take your wires and you roll them over and fold them in like that, this cutting, the cutting guide goes in here and it's just the guide that's gonna contact the wires, it's not gonna cut them, all right? So that's perfect. And if you're doing your own wiring, do yourself a favor. Just leave a couple of extra inches of wire above the box. So if you do run into a problem, you can loosen off that set screw and pull the wiring through and you'll be fine. Yeah. Okay, trick number three is using the mesh tape. Now, I know a lot of people use mesh tape, but they don't really understand how to use mesh tape. The first secret you need to know is how to find the end. My goodness. All right, here we go. Here's a bunch of mesh tape. I want to put it in my corner, all right? The way you want to do this is use your knife as a cutting edge. Now, we have a mesh tape here. It's got an adhesive on it. And the corners are the trickiest spot. So you want to stretch it and press it. And then only put pressure from one side, sliding it right into the corner, okay? Now, that'll do you okay. If you've seen my other videos, you know I use this, and I'll tape one side at a time. I can't use this knife with mesh tape because it'll end up cutting the actual fiber. So I gotta put that away. I need a different trick. So that, I gotta pull this out. This bad boy here does corners, okay? Doesn't do corners perfectly, but for a DIYer doing a basement, it does a pretty darn good corner. And you can press that into your fiber, and it'll set the tape perfectly for you. Also, because that edge here, see that edge? It's not 90 degrees, it's got a round, a bit of a bevel. It won't cut the fiber, all right? And so when you're applying your mud, you can do both sides of that at the same time, and you'll get a bit of a dimple, kind of a groove inside the corner. So it's not perfect. You could always come back in your next application and use a straight knife. But generally speaking, for most people, if you're doing your own house, this is a great way to go. The thing about mesh tape, and you need to know this, you can't use regular compound with it. If you use regular premixed drywall mud, you're gonna be very disappointed because it'll actually lift that adhesive off the paper and it'll be floating in the mud. And then you'll have to do three more coats just to make it look pretty. So what we do is we use Sheetrock 90. You mix this with water on site and it has a hardener in it and mixed at a certain level. So you can expect about an hour and a half working time before it sets up. Now that's pretty decent. So if you make a half a pail, you'll be able to do most of the mesh and tape work for a room this size in about an hour and then you're good. If you're not working that fast, don't make so much. It's up to you. But by doing this, you get the first application with the fiberglass mesh and adhesive, second application with this. Within a few minutes, you've got two applications on both sides of your corners. You're almost done. All you have to do is wait for that to dry and then come back and do a little bit of a feathering job and your corners are finished. And that'll save you a ton of time in a basement, especially if you have lots of bulkheads. So this is a great hack. Now you can use this on the entire room. Warning, it's more expensive than paper and you have to mix all your own mud. So <laughs> if you wanna just save yourself a lot of time on your basement and do just the inside corners this way, that'll help make sure you aren't gonna have cracks. It'll also speed up your process and then you can use paper everywhere else. That's a great way to blend, get the job done quick. The next trick is to use a wheel for your paper tape. And this sucker just sticks down here pretty easily. And once you've got this set up, you just slide it on your belt. Now I am always wearing a belt, just the nature of the beast. So this can just be sitting on your hip and you can pull the tape off as you need it. You can tear it, do your work, and it's always right there for you again the next time you need it. This is great if you're on, on a ladder and you don't wanna to have to set your paper tape down. It's also great for just doing around your rooms because you can just be spinning across your room, doing all your tape, pulling out some more, right? And just keep on going and going and going and it'll really speed up your process. So if you're gonna be doing a big job, that's 15 bucks worth spending. Of course, all of these tools we're talking about today, we're gonna to find links in our Amazon link in the description below. The next trick is if you make a mistake when you're doing your drywall and you find that your ceiling boxes for your light are too deep. If they're recessed too deep and there's a gap between the box and the drywall, you'll fail your electrical inspection. All right? So instead of ripping your ceiling apart and undoing your box and remounting it and going through all that hassle, you can cheat. You can buy what's called a box extender. 
Now, what this does is it just sits on the existing screws, you tighten that up, and it makes your box another half inch thicker. Now there is no limit to how many of these you can use, but I do advise that you go through your project before you drywall and try to make sure everything is taken into consideration because these things run about five bucks a pop. The next trick I'm gonna show you is the use of J-trim. Now the reason they call it J-trim is simple. The profile looks like a letter J. Now, if you have one of these fancy cutters from Weiss, ah, there we go. It's real easy to cut this down. And the idea here is you can use this to cap the rough side of the drywall. Now, it's not that tricky. We just basically take our trim, we set it on like this, and we roll it over. And there you go. So now you have a finished rough edge of drywall that has a finished edge. Here's the advantage. Anywhere where drywall is going to come in contact with moisture, like around a window, you can finish your drywall edge like this, press it up against the glass, and you aren't going to be transferring moisture into your drywall board. All right? That's brilliant. So on those cold mornings, you get condensation on the window. You aren't going to get any moisture going into your wall board. After the heat turns on and the air moves around, it'll dry that out eventually, and it'll protect your board so you don't get mold. And all you do to finish this is take your mud and fill in that gap. It'll probably take two applications and you won't even see it when you're finished. Now here's the other thing. Anywhere you've got a problem where your drywall is finishing interior up against a door frame area or some other kind of a weird situation where you want a drywall exposed but you want a finished edge, that's the way you do it, okay? So you can also use this on ceiling panels. You can use this if you want to scallop your ceiling. You can take a full sheet of drywall with a drain trim on it and you can do steps all the way down your ceiling. And all you do is put a little caulking bead and paint it in. This is how you can get one of those really cool tiered effects on the ceiling. Throw in a couple pot lights and look like a rock star. And it's just a piece of metal trim. Who knew? So the next trick we're going to teach you guys is about bulkheads. You may or may not have seen this, but there is more than one kind of corner bead. These are outside corners. They're used to make the transition and protect and give you something to mud against and protect the corner from damage from everyday life. Now, generally speaking, I like the metal corner on walls. Anywhere you're going to have uh, body traffic, these usually get screwed or nailed in to the framing of a wall, which is a pretty solid surface, and it can take that kind of abuse. And because it's all metal, it's nice and strong, and it'll help withstand all the abuse, especially from kids. You know, those little carts that they're wheeling around the kitchen in. <laughs> but when it comes to bulkheads, these are usually lightweight material. We have simple systems for building these, and we're designing something to be square and install easily, and so we don't want to be hammering it and using nails and trying to drive screws everywhere and trying to find them. That's not always a possibility. So what we do here is we're going to install one of these bad boys. Now, in my previous video, I showed you how to do it using drywall mud. You have to load up both sides of the edge and then press this in and then feather it out. And then two more coats later and it had to dry. What a process. This is going to be a lot faster. Take your knife. Make sure that the edge of the bulkhead is smooth. Okay. That's it, done, smooth, hooray. Now, for our next trick, ladies and gentlemen, I know, spray glue. <laughs> this is awesome. Now make sure you use the right one. There's a lot of spray glues on the market. This is, I think, who makes this one again? Oh, it's 3M, 3M61, okay? I thought it was the DuPont product, but it's a 3M product. Now this is awesome. It does tell you on the instructions to shake it vigorously. So make sure you do that because there are components in here that will separate over time and you want to make sure your glue is going to work. Now, the way we install this is we put a nice little bead. You see they even color it for you so you know that your glue is going on. Isn't that fancy schmancy? That's a lot faster than putting mud on the ceiling. And then all you do is do the same thing to your corner bead. Alright? Run that glue down that corner bead. The recommendation here is to allow about a full minute for this to set before you apply it. So you can do the whole bulkhead on the ceiling, spray a few beads down, get them cut and measured in advance, spray it all down, go take a break, come back, and then just press them all into place. Now the secret here on this corner bead, if you can take a look, we'll go through this again. There's a short metal and there's a long side metal, okay? The long side metal is to cover the exposed cut on the drywall. So that is the underside. So we are going to spin this around. And we're going to show you how simple it is to put this in. 
All right, here we go. Okay, now you really want to get this perfect. And it has a little bit of flexibility, so you can roll it back and forth. Like I said, you got about 15 minutes of fooling around time on this, okay? Here we go. Now, take your knife. Make sure you have a bit of a gap from that to the edge on both sides. If you don't have a gap to fill, you have installed it wrong, and you'll need to pull it around to create that gap. So you can just have a quick check. We're good. Nice. Instant corner bead. Now give this 15 minutes, and you can come back with a hardener compound and do one coat with a four inch knife, a fill coat, and then about an hour later, you can come back with your 12 or 14 inch trowel and put a finish coat on that bulkhead, and it's completely taped within two hours, all three coats. Loving it. So one of the disadvantages of using a drywall panel lift is momentum. You get going so fast, and it is so nice to see things moving quickly that sometimes you forget and you cover something in the ceiling up. I don't care how good you think you are at drywall, everybody does this once in a while, you'll cover something up and have to go back to repair it. Now as a DIYer, you're more than likely to cause this kind of issue for yourself, so we're gonna show you a couple tricks how to fix it. First of all, we have got a hose bib, right? We have residential construction here, so we have a poured concrete foundation, and then we have wood starting from here and going up. So this drywall is screwed right to the floor joist, and that floor joist is not a dimensional lumber, it's an I-beam kind of constructed beam. So what happens here is you have a beam, and then another one, and then a huge cavity, and we have some sort of an exterior plate, and they'll drill a hole and run your water line out through that, but because of our climate, we have almost a foot of insulation. So what they have is they have a hose bib, so you have a tap outside, and then it turns a gasket inside, about 14 inches inside the wall. And after that, they turn, put a shutoff valve, and it usually has a little bleeder on it. And so if you forget where your hose bib is, just go outside and find it. Run around the house, identify the location. In this situation, it's right up here, just about a foot off the corner of that window, and I know it's up here. So I'm gonna put in a spring-loaded trap door right here. And this is a nine by nine, or about 250 mils. Okay, and I'll show you how this thing operates. So you can see here that the way this is designed, it creates compression. So if this is my drywall and I cut a hole, this is on an angle, and then over here, this slides, all right? So if I cut the hole just a little bit smaller than this square, I'm not gonna have much compression. It's gonna be sloppy. So if I cut it a couple of inches shy, I'm gonna have a nice force, okay? And that'll hold that ceiling in place. And then when I wanna move it, all I have to do is push this edge, okay? And then it'll fold right out of the ceiling, which is brilliant. So what we're gonna do is just take our dimension that has this little framing here. It's about six inches. So I'm gonna make a hole in the ceiling that's six and a half by six and a half. And that'll be plenty. All right. So when you're gonna put your hole in your ceiling for your hose bib, since we don't have an exact idea where it is, we know it's around here-ish. Just consider this. You're gonna get up on a ladder to turn this off. You're gonna be reaching into the ceiling. Don't put it back here and you have to reach up and then reach over. All right, get it close to the corner, but not so close that you can't tape it properly. And basically what you wanna do is measure off six and a half, I think we went with, right? Okay, so I set my tape at three and three eighths. And of course, my tape itself is three and an eighth. I don't know if you're aware of this, but on the back of these things, every one of these tape measures ever made in the history of mankind has got the dimension from one side to the other. So when you're measuring things, you can get the exact number into the corner. You just take your measurement and add the size of the tape. Just a little nugget there in case you weren't aware. Anyway, we're gonna just go like this, and here's my joist. I'll give myself a little bit of space, and I'm thinking that'll be good here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it just makes this real easy. You can make sure you have the right kind of dimension. There we go. I'm using black marker just so that you can see it at home. There's lots of overlap and stuff on this, so I don't care if there's a little marker on the ceiling. And then we're gonna use our cutout tool. Now this gets a little dusty. Now, let me 
me see if I can find this thing here. There it is. Wow, in this case, they have a bunch of pecs and then the shut up valve is actually over here. <laughs> Who knew? But it's a quarter turn. I'm actually gonna close it. Do the customer a favor. It's getting cold outside. We actually had frost last night. And I'll let them know that I did that. Now here's how this works. You don't want to put this side in first because then you've got to try to fool around, okay? Put the piece that's on the spring, this section, up against the drywall first. And you open and close it both in the same direction. And it's cool like that until you can slide that end up. Done. And when you want to take it off, you just push this direction, pull it down, piece of cake. These are great. You can use them for plumbing access, electrical access. The other thing is, sometimes when you're working in your own house, you'll find a junction box in the ceiling. And if you're cool with this, you can actually paint these the same as your ceiling, okay? So you can actually drywall the ceiling with junction boxes in the ceiling. The code wants you to have access. So if you put one of these in, for eight bucks, you can put in a trapdoor, have access to that, and it can save you hundreds of dollars instead of hiring an electrician to come in and rewire something. So here's the irony. We're making this video and I did the spring-loaded door. I come down off the ladder and I look over and I see the can sitting in the ceiling. I'm like, whoops, I forgot to put one of the elbows on my heat run and I've closed it up. So while we're at this making a video, I'm going to show you how to do this because this is a great trick. Traditionally in basements, you're going to get one of these 4x10 grates and they're going to have it on a bar and screwed up and the plate will be screwed to it and look really ugly. Well, I've got a different way of doing it. I like to take one of these elbows Take off the old 4x10, stick on one of these elbows. Now, traditionally, heat runs are five inch pipe, okay? This one will go into the other piece. You put a couple screws on it, and then that's sticking flush with the drywall. And when you're done, you're gonna throw on one of these under compression. Now, these are brilliant. These are diffusers, and they dial open and dial close. So in a basement in the winter time, you can open up and get lots of extra heat down here. And in the summer, you can dial them back so you don't add too much air conditioning to an already cool space. Brilliant control, gives you the ability to adjust each room individually. So I rec definitely recommend using these. No screws, no caulking. It's a compression fit and it looks perfect every time. So what I gotta do to install this thing, first of all, is open up my ceiling. Now, if you don't have this trick in your toolbox, you're gonna be unscrewing this entire nine foot sheet of drywall and dropping it down. And then you're gonna be back in trouble because if you're working alone, it's hard to reinstall this, okay? So I'm gonna show you my trick. And that requires my rotazip. zip And I'm cutting a little bit too deep here for comfort. We'll set that. And we're just gonna cut a smaller piece out. And that's it. Okay, so for removing the drywall, you have to take your dimple bit out and go back to a traditional Phillips bit, number two. All right. Now, I know my heat run is over here near the window, so I just have a few screws to remove. We'll start with all the ones over by here. Don't leave them in the drywall. You'll be surprised how easy it is to rip your fingers open when you leave a screw in the drywall when you're moving around. Now realize where I cut this joint, it's going to be full of dust, okay? Yep, figures. Just missed a little bit of the zip here. Oh. Yep, full of dust. Now, a little dust isn't going to kill you, but uh, <laughs> if you really want to, you could wear safety glasses, but I don't really care about a little bit of dust. I got tear ducts. So I have a washer solution in my face that cleans all that out. Here we go. We just slide that on there. Now I need a proper screw. Well, I'm out of screws, but no worries. There's a secret to this. The, um, the code for installing ductwork is always three screws over the joint. All right. And that's because that keeps things from moving apart around while you're building the ducking system. But once you've got it all built, Feel free to steal a screw from a neighbor. <laughs> That'll save you a ton of trouble. Now, I know that this isn't foil tape, but regardless, that'll help. I can reach around and get all that on there. And that'll keep that ducting in place. 
what you want to do, make sure your damper is lined up to the open position. It's actually open. It's a great time to reach in there and double check. It's a great big round piece of metal cut, okay, that sits on this hinge. And when I go like that, it's supposed to close it. If it's screwed too tight, it doesn't operate properly. So a lot of times you'll get these installed and they'll look and see that this is pointing in the right direction and think everything's fine. But the reality would be closed. So if you don't have heat coming through one of your ducts, reach on out up in there and make sure that that metal is opened up because half the time it doesn't work properly. Now that we got this in position, we are gonna take a little bit of this. This is what we call all round, it's just metal band. Comes in a little box, usually in the plumbing department, okay? Is I'm gonna be putting this over the top of my heat run, okay? And I'm going to be compressing it down so I know that it's sticking flush with my drywall. If you're looking for this strapping, it's called all round. They sell it in the plumbing department. They have a, all kinds of different varieties, okay? And the idea for this is, when I go to press this up into my ceiling, I don't want it moving. It's compression fit, all right? That's what that's there for, okay? So, if you don't put in the strap and it's just hanging around, you're gonna go push this up, it'll all pop apart on you. Might even fall out of the trunk line in the ceiling. Okay, so now we have to patch this up. We can't just screw it back in and leave this joint unattended. So we're gonna take a piece of one by three, cut it down and install it so that we can splice that drywall back together. Ah, that looks like about three feet-ish. About there. Now, I use this technique all the time. Whenever I'm doing drywall, I grab a dozen of those sticks. Anywhere my drywall ends, I just add one of these and keep on going. There's a lot of guys, they take time and they'll measure to the middle of the wood and they'll cut it. That's nice and handy if the wood is straight. A lot of times it's not. And so you'll find that a one and a half inch piece of stud just doesn't cut it for you. And then you have to put the screws right on the edge and angle them. It's just a mess. This works so much faster and it won't drive you crazy. It's raining dust. There we go. Now, when you're screwing your drywall back in, you can't use the same holes as before. Okay, it won't hold the screw. As a rule, that'll just be a very ineffective system. So, use new holes. All right. And here's how you know where to put a screw. Everywhere you see a screw, you put one right next to it. Problem solved. When you're working on your ceilings, it's nice to have a rule where one person is in charge of all the measuring and cutting on the drywall. The other person is in charge of leaving all the information next to it where everything goes. So take out your pencil. You have a sheet installed. Before you put this one in, mark line arrow 12, 10, and you'll know where it is. So all I'm going to do is go like this. 10, and it was 12. There's my spot. I'm going to adjust this a little bit to make sure that I have my can. It's going to be noisy, but I'm going to just plunge it in the middle, go until I find the outside edge. Now, since the run is coming this way, I'm going to go towards the run, so there'll be resistance. Sometimes they'll slide left and right. And then I'm going to just cut in a circular motion with the idea of I know where the, the, which direction I'm heading, but I'm kind of pulling towards the middle the whole time I'm cutting. And that helps to keep the hole nice and tight. Okay. <laughs> now, you don't always get this perfect the first time. So if you're feeling like you've lost the drill bit because the can is on an angle, it'll slide underneath. Just make the hole small, knowing it's easier to come back and fix it later. Just adjust the depth, and then we'll do the rest of it. When you're all finished painting, you just compress that in there. Perfect every time. So one of the most unique problems you're going to ever run into with drywall is the goal is to have all of these sheets, all of these tapered edges tight, all of the gaps you want tight, 
tight against the walls, tight against each other, and that requires everything to be square, right? But the rule of thumb is this, nothing in this world is square. We, we've learned this, I don't know how many years, nothing is square. So you can't assume that this wall and this wall are, are parallel. You can't assume that the drywall coming off this wall is going to be able to keep everything nice and square and flush. So what you want to do when you get into a situation like this with your ceiling bulkhead is put a square up against your edge and check it against the wall. Well, look at this. I am out a half an inch over two feet. <laughs> over here, I'm out. Whoa. I'm actually flush here. That's awesome. But if you look down here, you'll see the wall is curving. Okay? That's going to cause you problems. The reality is you don't have a lot of luxury here to just measure the gap here and then measure the gap here and assume one side is square or the other because this wall is curving. So it'll start square. It won't finish square. What you have to do is use the tools that are available. Your T-framing square. Put it up against your finished edge, all right, and create a, off the center line, draw a nice long center line here on the ceiling, okay? I've already put, done that in advance. Now, take your laser level. Now, these are all tools that we, we recommend that you own if you're going to do renovations at home, all right? Now, we want to take your laser level and place it on that line. Okay... Okay, there you go. Woo. So now I've got a laser line all the way down my hallway, right? So I'm going to have somebody on the drywall and I'm going to say we're going to measure left and right at the front edge in the middle and four feet in. So I go L1, L, L2, L3, R1, R2, L3, and I'm just going to go like this and I'm going to see this right on my tape. It's 21 and three quarters, 22 and an eighth. Wow. 22 and 3 eighths and they're going to take a center line on their drywall and they'll measure off the center line just like I'm measuring off the center line and this is really simple that way you can translate all this information onto your drywall then you can cut it and you can fit it in it'll be tight no matter what kind of shape it is if you have curved walls bowed walls weird angles this solves all your problems so no matter how creative your situation is that you've got to solve a laser level a t-square and a little bit of patience and you can drywall anything Ah, here we go. So I'm going to mix up some mud here now. So for those of you who haven't seen our other drywall videos, uh, I'm not going to go through all of this process, but just to say that this is actually pretty simple, quick, and clean if you run your bag off the edge of the bale like this. Don't be one of these guys that's trying to squeeze every ounce of mud out of that box. You're going to throw a few ounces away. At the end of the day, it's only worth 30 cents. That's not worth the time it takes to go wash your hands. <laughs> now, take up one bottle of water. Okay. Because you want to have this nice and thin for what we're going to do. And then we just mix it up for a minute. Silky smooth. <laughs> I'm such a tease. Because before we get to the, some of the mudding techniques, we're going to show you a few quick examples of other things that that Rotozip does. And you're going to fall in love with this tool and get want to buy one for sure after this. One of my favorite things for the Rotozip is when I have damaged wall. You know, accidents happen on a job site. So you don't know what's in that wall half the time because you've got a pilot guide tip. You can set the depth to a little over half an inch. Cut this out. Hmm. Okay, and now you can make a California patch and patch that up. Now, if you've never seen this done before, we have a great video we'll put in the link in the description for how to do a California patch.
Done. The other awesome thing about this tool is that when you're hanging a sheet of drywall over a huge window, you can put it up as one sheet so you keep the integrity of the sheet. If you try to cut the window out first and then install it, you run the risk of not being square or breaking the joint when you're installing. This way you just throw it up, add some screws, and zip. Of course, throwing a couple screws in there will help keep control. There we go. Ah, I can see again. All right. Well, one of the most common scenarios you're going to run into is electrical rework. Electricians are famous for this, for cutting the holes that they need without any thought to how they're going to rebuild. It's funny because it seems to be a lot of extra work to cut two little holes where you could just cut one big one. Remember when you're patching drywall, a small or a big hole, it's the same amount of work. So take a piece of drywall it's more than adequate for what you're dealing with hold it up okay trace it out and i know this is marker i just drove myself crazy looking for my pencil couldn't find it so when i'm done this before i might i'm gonna have to get some kills and spray that marker line i know don't bother putting that in the comment section <laughs> now i don't want to risk cutting anything in this wall so I'm going to set the depth of my blade right here so only the guide point is sticking out the other side. So if I pass by any wires, I'm not going to end up cutting them, okay? What I want to do is just cut out this hole in its entirety. The way I do that is I'm going to use this little pedal here up against the drywall and I'm going to just roll it around. Now you'll notice that when I cut that, I cut on the outside of the black line. So I know for a fact that this drywall will fit in the hole. If I came shy of the line, I went back like over here and I fixed it up a little bit. You just want to make sure that when you do this, you do it once. This is not the kind of thing that you're looking to be perfect. You just want it done right away. Okay, so we rip all this junk out. Come on, baby. Yeah, figures I'm gonna use a thousand screws in this small space again. Does that ever make any bloody sense? Oh yeah, yeah. Look, there's a drywall joint here. That's nice. This is not flooring, people. We don't need to put a screw every two inches. Unbelievable. Now the reason we want a nice big hole is because we want to use the rotor zip to cut this. If I wanted to, I could probably measure right all the different angles and then pre-cut the hole into this box. But by using this system. I know my drywall fits right there, right? Now, for everybody at home who's patching a hole like this, here's a great system. Before you put your patch on, put a screw on the existing wall board, just in case, since there were screws here, there might not be screws for a while. You wanna have that nice and tight. And it also marks where the new drywall has to be screwed. It's the same as doing that stitching in the ceiling. Speaking of stitching, we saved a couple of screws and a little piece of wood for over here. That'll help keep everything nice and strong. Now, put this over here again. I know it's gonna fit exactly. Okay, so we're going to rotor zip the plug. We need a measurement first. All right, so from here, we're going to put, we want to plunge right here, put an inch off each corner. Okay, so we're going to go down 14 inches and we're going to come across from the outside at 15. That's easy math, easy to remember. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
And these two screws I'm putting in, I'm not sinking all the way. Okay, I don't want too much force against the box. And now I take my measurement for 14 and 15. 15 is just inside the box. 14 is right here. All right, good to go. This is a plastic box, but the guide tip point isn't going to cut the box apart. It's also set up a little bit differently that when you put your switches on it, um, you have to keep your hole nice and tight. If you make the hole too big on this box, the cover plate won't even cover it. There's not as much room to play here. So you really want to have this tool whenever you're working with plastic boxes or you're going to be patching holes all day long. And that is perfection. Now a situation like this, you finish easy, because now your finishing is away from the box. You can always fill the hole, throw in a little bit of mesh, a couple coats of 90, this patch is done. Whenever your patch is too close to these fixtures, you've got to do a whole circle around it because you've got to make it nice and flush for the finish plate. Now when you're finishing this, if you finish like this, you're away from the plate, everything will be perfect. Okay, so that was really cool fixing that patch up. Now, if you're using your Rotazip and you're new to it, make sure you go counterclockwise. And if you make a mistake and run off and make a huge chunk out of the wall, that's okay. CGC makes these awesome outlet patches, okay? This is like corner mesh tape. It's a lot thicker, it's perforated, and it's already the size of your box. So, what you can do is you can just put mud on the area, press one of these in place, let it dry, and then you can finish it. And it'll give you a nice strong area around the patch if you just fill it with mud and then paint, it's gonna end up cracking after the light plate goes on at some point, and you're gonna be really disappointed. You went through all of that work just to be disappointed with a crack. So use something like that, or lots and lots of paper tape. This is just really handy. The other thing I wanted to show you, this is my little favorite little foot pedal, okay? It's just solid metal. It's just designed so that when you're working alone, you can put your drywall on it and step on it, and it lifts like a lever. But the cool thing about it is the backside is also a rasp. So you keep this on you all the time. So if your drywall isn't gonna fit snug up against a corner, because when you cut, it gets all bumpy, that'll give you a clean factory edge. Nice, keep one of these handy as well. All right, so now, a couple of mudding tips. We can help speed the process up a little bit. We showed you in the video earlier, this little gizmo here, and this is an inside corner mud tool okay and it fits on any standard broom or paint stick and the idea here is this will speed up your corner mudding process dramatically the idea is you're basically painting mud into the inside corner here okay now that is awesome because the other technique i showed in a previous video and just slap it in there and lather it on the other technique i showed you was taking the side of your four inch knife, right? Okay, now it's a little messy, right? But you got your paper wheel, get this going, fold a bunch of tape off. Once you get good at using these tools, you're gonna be really happy. And then you're gonna stick this in the corner. Boom. All right, now, because you're not using a lot of mud, you hardly have to press. And you're not gonna have a bunch of mud squeezing out. You're not gonna need your hawk on you because you aren't gonna be cleaning off the mud off your knife. That is that simple, inside corner. Wow, that'll speed up the average basement by about two or three hours, I'm just guessing. Definitely worth the 20 bucks. You're gonna have to probably pick that up at a drywall specialty store. I'm gonna check and keep my eyes open. If you find it on Amazon, I'll put it in the description link below. So, again, inside corner mudding tool. You gotta love it. Next thing I wanna show you. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, you know I love using the hawk. I just love to throw my mud on here, load it up. I can put enough mud on here to last for a long time. So much more convenient for the, than the pan for keeping your tools clean. Hello? Okay. <laughs> So, in the beginning of our video, I showed you how to use the mesh tape on the inside of a corner. 
Now I'm going to show you the difference in taping techniques from doing paper corner on the bottom and the mesh on the top. All right, so in the paper technique, you would use that corner roller or the side of your knife and you apply the mud. All right. Now, if you're good at this, it doesn't take that long. But I know most homeowners aren't good at that, which is why that roller is so effective because it makes up the difference for experience. Okay? And the difference here is look at this. Look at all the mud that I'm taking off. Now I gotta have a hawk. So I've got a lot of tools on me. If I'm working on a ladder, I've got too many tools now to be efficient. Okay, and there's an inside corner with tape. If, however, I wanted to use this tool, okay, I can load up both sides of that trowel. Simply go into the corner. Load it up again. And there your tape on both sides. Now, I told you earlier, it's not as clean, it's not as sexy, but it will get the job done. Okay, now after that's dry, you can come back for another coat. And it really comes down to how much pressure you're using as to what kind of finish you get. That's not terrible. So if you're new to this, just use a little pressure on the outside, clean up your edge. That's not bad. Now this can be, you put the tape and the mud at the same time. Now I've got the tape application is the same as putting the fiberglass on as this. This corner is mudded, okay? The best I can do when I'm using tape is come back and mud one side. And I've got to wait till the next day for that to dry before I can do the other side. So, fiberglass, I've got the tape coat done and both sides done at the same time. See how much faster that is. And if you're using 90 minute mud like I am here, you can have this room done in just a couple of hours. Well, that's it for all the tips and tricks today. There's lots more we can show you, but we'll save that for another video another time. So if you got questions about any of the processes or tools or tricks today, put them in the comment section below. Don't forget to give us a big thumbs up. We appreciate all the love that you guys are showing us. And we're gonna put a link in the description for these tools. If you don't have the ability to find them in your area, hopefully we'll be able to have links for you for Amazon. And if not, you can always Google search your local drywall supplier. They should be able to help you. And that's it for this time. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram. We'll see you again real soon.